Welcome to the fourth episode of the show today. Um, the subject today is obviously going to be the big game. Uh, Manchester United versus Liverpool at Old Trafford. Um, as you can see today, I've got a special guest with me. It's uh, Martin, a fellow Liverpool fan, uh, a blogger, and he's on Twitter. If you need to, uh, obviously, you send him a message at all after the show. Uh, the link should be at the bottom of the screen now. So, uh, how big is this game? <laughs> Liverpool Man United, massive, isn't it? Yeah. Biggest game for me of the uh, league. And this season, I always look at it's the first one of the fixtures come out in June. Liverpool United, Liverpool United, got it. That's one I always look out for. Um, yeah, it's not bigger in world football. You can talk about your Barcelona, your, your Real Madrid, massive. Your Milan derby, massive. But English Premier League, best league in the world. Nothing comes close to this for me. It's the, it's the biggest derby um, for me. It, it doesn't make a difference that Liverpool obviously the league positions are nowhere near Man United. We haven't won the league. In a, in a many many a year, as we all know, and I don't think the derby has uh, has lessened in any way. You get players coming out saying this, you know, this is the derby. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Ferguson, every Liverpool manager, this this is this is the derby. It's a defining moment for it is for both teams. This is the game you want to win. If you if you can pick one game to win and lose all the others, you, you'd want to be Man United at and Old Trafford. Yeah, you'd want to be them at Old Trafford. Um, so I don't think the the derby's lessened. In, in intensity and if, obviously with all the Suarez business, the Evera, I think it's as intense as ever, you know. These kind of things don't happen if the game weren't intense. You know, if you watch Stoke against Sunderland, you know, the, you know, <laughs> the, you don't get that kind of incidence because, you know, the, the heart isn't in the game as much as the Liverpool and Man United games. So, anyway, moving on, we all know it's a big game. So the situation at the moment is... You know, Liverpool, we, we've been, if you look at my previous episode, we've been doing much better. You know, Aston Villa, uh, Stoke, they weren't very good results, but generally we are we are getting there. I think our situation is still improving. It's not the ideal time to have a derby, but when is the ideal da- time to have the derby? But what, what do you think? I disagree. I think it's the best time to have the derby at the minute. It's just, for me, we've just hit form. Um, blips against Stoke and Villa, obviously, but um, if you can call them blips... Um, yeah, but you know we've, he would turn the corner for me like look at the start of the season first game lost to West Brom then we lost to Arsenal good result against City but then we've been steady since then you know a few losses a few draws mm. too many we had a period over like in November October too many draws Yeah. but now you know we've got a bit of a run together you know people will say oh yeah you've only beat QPR you've only beat Mansfield but you know those are games we're still winning we're still gaining confidence from them you know I think it's a good time to play United at the minute because um, obviously they're seven points clear at the top over City now they'll want to keep going on with that they'll want to X and they'll want to add to that um, deficit they've got over City but you know I mean there's always for me it's never a bad time to play United because no matter what no matter what run you're on yeah, no matter fair. what run you're on a derby will always will always be a different game you can never predict a derby you can never mm. say you know what we should win we should lose because anything can happen form goes out the window exactly it? exactly form if we win 19 games in a row well then all of a sudden we've got to go to Goodison Park you think to yourself oh we could still lose you know yeah. this is this is a, a losable uh, game so yeah the, the situation is um, it's nervy I think I think Possibly, I wouldn't know, but I think Man United fans are possibly worrying about this game just as much as we are. It's not, it's not a given. Uh, we have beaten them at Old Trafford before. There's, there's no reason at all why we can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously, I don't want to get into that subject yet because uh, that's the next one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that is the situation at the moment. I think that leads us into now. Can we do it? I can't see any reason why we can't. We've got the squad on paper matches theirs, in my opinion. Um, they've just been playing better as a team lately than we have they've been getting the better results but as I said before form goes out the window in Derby days Um, you know I think the mentality of the squad you know we've won a couple of games the confidence will be high so we're going to so we're going into there with good spirits so you know I can't see you know I I can't see United really thinking this is going to be a walkover because it won't be it's United Liverpool so I think there's no reason why we can't go in there storm the fortress um, and get a good result yeah, because Old Trafford has been a fortress against us recently. You know, our record, like you mentioned, uh, one win in the last eight, Old Trafford is absolutely garbage. Um, our, our, our former Anfield, mm. as uh, in the last two games, it was a draw and a loss, so due for a win. Um, so, you know, like, like the topics, can we do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. There's, there's no reason why we can't. Um, you know, if um, a third tier side went to Old Trafford, can we do it? Probably going to be 
No. But in this case, you know, league position doesn't really come into it at the moment. It's all about form at the window, like you said. So, theoretically, can we do it? Yeah. Um, but the next, obviously, the next topic, do we think we will do it? And I'd have to say, no. I, I, I don't think we will. I'm just going to be honest. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I think one goal is going to be in it. Um, but it's the whole, you know, we do for a win, but, you know, that's not how it works. It's because you do, doesn't mean you'll get it. It's just something to, you know, make, make the statistics look a bit a bit happier. But I think United are in, are in good form. Better form than Liverpool, uh, riding high in the league. They know how big they're, they're as up for it as we are. Um, other things as well, because um, at, at this time uh, we don't, we still don't know what the team sheets are. Mm. Uh, I think Rooney has got a big part to play in this. Um, will he start? I think if he does start, you know, I, I think our chances of winning are probably going to go down because I think you know being an Evertonian. And playing for Man United, he's got two reasons to uh, to really shift up a gear against Liverpool. Um, but really, I don't think we'll win it. I think there's been a lot of two ones on Trevor. I think there's just going to be another two one. Um, but what about you? Do you think we will honestly do it? You know, my heart to heart says no. I don't think we will. But there's that little bit in my brain that's thinking to myself, well, you know what? We can do it. We'll be up for it. So a little power rain thinks that we will. As you said before, the, the score's been it's been two one, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. The two one seems to be the uh, it, it seems to be the more dominating score lately. I, I can think, I do think that we can shift that around two one to us this time. Now I may I may be being a bit optimistic there, but I think if if certain players are on their game and certain players for United aren't on their game as they have, as they have been, you know they've been conceding a lot of goals lately. You know the you know like. I can't think of the statistic, but a lot of the games this year they've conceded first. Mm, yeah, um, actually, so if quite we, early as well. If we can get the early goal and maybe get a second, obviously at Old Trafford, two goals may not be enough. But if we can do that and, you know, and then play the game Brendan wants us to play, I really think that we can... I really think we'll do it. Yeah. it, it, it but I think the key is the early goals. If Pace. I've got, I've got to say Sturridge, Sterling, Suarez... We've got some pace. Mm. Um, Evra's not the slowest, he's not the quickest, but Rio Ferdinand and, and Vidic, I don't want to go too much into that because obviously uh, we're, we're about to discuss the players to watch, well maybe we should just uh, hop onto that. Uh, the players to watch, good and bad, I'll, uh, I've already been starting to talk about Rio Ferdinand so I'll mm. start talking about the bad for Liverpool and Man United. Um, Rio Ferdinand, I think you know he started to lose a yard of pace a couple of seasons ago. I think yeah, he's, yeah. he's lo- losing another yard every season. Mm-hmm. He's been, you know, turned quite a bit this season. United have been, con- con- they've been shipping goals, Robert Van Persie, as we all know, but yeah. what people, a lot of people don't want to look at is, you know, when they win these four threes and three twos, they look at the three, but they don't look at the two. Yeah. You know, they've conceded two, that's shocking. You know, um, coach, you know, defensive coaches will be like, they're not that interested in the attack, are they? They're, they're, you know, their, their job is to make sure they, they're quite tight at the back, but they, they haven't been. Ferdinand, like I've, uh, I'm talking about now, is um, he's lost a few yards of pace. He keeps getting turned. We've got Sturridge, we've got um, Sterling, we've got Suarez. Bags of pace. I think Rio Ferdinand really needs to make sure he's he's on his game today. Mm-hmm. When he has an absolute blinding game, he is he's a brick wall. But when he has a shocking game, which he has had more than once this season, I think you know I'm going to be. Watching him, I think uh, he needs to, you know, he needs to be careful. Vidic, not so much, you know. Vidic is, is quite a bit more pacey than Rufus. I wouldn't call him a pacey player, but what, what about you in I terms th- of bad? Th- I think with the Vidic situation, is he's been sent off four times his career, three against Liverpool. Exactly. Yeah. You know, his disciplinary record isn't that good. I don't think he likes. I I, I remember the one against um, against us at Old Trafford and the four one result. Gerard turned him, completely left him for dead, hauled him down. I don't think he likes being beaten to the ball. No. You know, like, I think the uh, when um, I think it was Torres' first goal when um but made it one all. He the ball came over the top, the wind took it, the ball bounced, Vidic went for the ball, missed it completely, 
then try to haul Torres yeah. down completely miss. I don't think he likes making those mistakes. He just like being embarrassed. Um, I don't, and then yeah. he just and then he just lashes out and he gets sent off. I don't think he's malicious. I just think he's learned about how much a derby means to mm. uh, you know the yeah. players and the fans. He wants to be a part of it, but you know he crosses that professionalism line and he you know he loses a call. I don't I don't think he's a bad player. I don't mm. think he, he has deliberately a learned as a hothead though. From uh, I know games with Serbia, he's he's not been. Mm. You know, I've seen him a couple of times for Serbia. He's, he's not been the most level-headed of players. So to make sure, obviously, we're Liverpool fans, but you know, we, I, I don't want to be too biased. Mm, so you know, on the on the bad side, you know, Suarez. Mm. Um, I think when he has a blinding game, he lifts the whole team. You know, when he's scoring goals at the other end, the defense seems to be performing better. Yeah. But if he has a bad game, you know, he's gone to Old Trafford today. They're not his number one fans. To say the least. Uh, uh, you know he he is a professional. He's n- he knows people don't like him. You know IX fans like him. People from Uruguay like him. We like him, but that's about it. Mm. Um, if he can, you know, use that crowd hostility in a positive way, that's great. But if if, if it gets to him, you know, if if he's trying to be careful in a way that you know, I don't want to go into the racism thing, but you know he doesn't want to make another mistake. No. You know, he wants to put it behind him. I'm, I'm worried that he may be too careful, may not, you know, go for that extra ball, may not try those shots, because maybe the crowd will get to him or something like that. So I think as a place of watching it in a, in a negative way, it is Suarez, I think, if he has a bad game, I think we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, even if the other 10 players are on the top of the game, if he has a bad game... I think that could really spell quite a bit of trouble for us. I yeah, think. it's the it's like the Jekyll and Hyde thing with Suarez, isn't it? If he, I mean, more times than not, he's had a good game this season. You know, obviously he's been banging them in for mm. fun. But you know, on the occasion when he when he has a bad game, he gets frustrated. One thing I don't like about Luis Suarez is if a decision goes against him, if, if he's fouled and the referee yeah. give it, he just sits the arms in the air like and it's how it web. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> how Webb isn't going to stand for it. Although briefly on the Howard Webb situation. People are saying how biased he may be towards United. He gave us our first penalty this year again, and it was for Luis Suarez. So I think that you know, I think I don't think he's going to be as bad as people are making out. But going back to Suarez, if he's on his form, if he's on top of his game, using that crowd energy, you know they're going to be booing him, they're going to be calling him all the names on the sun. If he can turn that around and use that in a positive way, as he has done before, then I think I don't think he's I think he's untouchable. But if he lets it get to him in any way. And it affects his performance. He can drag the team mm. down because who? Because you know we might have Sturridge there, but you know if Sturridge isn't being fed by Suarez, if he's being, for lack of words, a petulant child, then sometimes when when things don't go his way, then you know I think it can spell danger because we've got we haven't got that threat that everyone thinks we have. Yeah. If Suarez isn't there. And to, to keep on the tradition of not being biased, um, a player to watch and and it will move to the positive now rather than the negative. Um, is Hernandez. I mm. think Hernandez has been, to put it mildly, shit hot. You know, he's been, he's he's just come again, and he? He, he he came on the scene, scored a shitload of goals, but then disappeared. Welbeck yeah. came in for a bit, Hernandez was in the shade, you know, and then he's, he's back, he's scoring goals. Mm. Uh, I think he's, he gets into spaces where nobody thinks to go. Yeah. Like, he get, he just creates space for himself, he scores a lot of tap-ins mm. because poacher. he finds those space. Exactly, poacher. It reminds me of Solskjaer. Mm. Um, when Hernandez starts, I'm not overly keen. Um, I, when he plays 90 minutes, he generally doesn't impress me that much. He's a bit of a... I mean, he's been starting recently. He's been playing well, don't get me wrong. He has. Um, but generally, if, you know, if he doesn't start and he's on the bench... If I saw him on the touchline at around, I don't know, 65 to 70 minutes, I, and it's nil-nil or a draw, I think to myself, shit, we need, we need to bring another defender on. Yeah. We, you know, we. I, I hope Brendan Rodgers has noticed this and, you know, told him, mark, mark him. Yeah. Um, mm. Which is another danger. He's the one that creates a lot of things. Like Robin Van Persie, he's the obvious target to mark. So people try to, you know, avoid Hernandez a little bit. You know, Van Persie's holding the ball up, mm. passes the ball, and others tapping you can't because they've all they've been looking at Van Persie. He's he's a danger, so you know that's a player to watch for me on the United side. Yeah, I agree. You can't overlook that bit, Hernandez. He 
for me, he doesn't get the credit he deserves at Old Trafford. He, you know, he's he's an absolutely fantastic player. He doesn't get the chance. I mean, everyone thinks about Robbie my Percy, Wayne Rooney, but no, Javier Hernandez, he's brilliant. He, as he said, he gets into those spaces where no one thinks of going. He's a real poacher in front mm. of the goal. And another player, uh, United have got today. You know, Paul Scholes, for example. If should he play any role today? I think that. Obviously, being one of the oldest, if if, if not about the second oldest behind Giggs, you know, I think that he brings a certain passion to the game. You know, you, you, it's a Manchester lad, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he proves you don't have to be the the most skilled player in the squad to be a good player because he's not the most skilled player. You know, his tackles are horrendous, but his passion is <laughs> fantastic. And you know, he'll always he'll always cause you problems. He's getting in your face. You know, he's he's looking for that tag that tackle. Um, breaking legs, but you know, no. In all seriousness, he is he his his passion. Is, it's more than his skill that you've got to watch out for. It's his passion. It's it's just, isn't it? You can he will he will spot he will spot runs. I suppose he's like he's like the he's like their version of Steven Gerrard for us. Yeah. Um. You know, he, he's Mister Reliable. Um. But you know, I think players to watch again. I'm going to move back to Liverpool now for us. Um. Stuart Downing if should he play today because again people have been saying how improved he is and he has improved he really has improved for me he's like he's, he's, his, his head is up a lot more he's making those runs he's cutting inside as he likes to do shooting on his left peg and he is a good player but he's been playing well against you know the likes of Wigan Fulham Mansfield so if he can prove it today then I think you know he really has turned the corner under Brendan Rodgers Right, so we're on to the last section of the show now, possibly the most important, the predictions. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put my neck on the line and start. I think it will be two one United. Um, I don't think the goal scorers matter. Um, I think for us it'll it'll probably be uh, Suarez, um, but if you're United, um, Hernandez and possibly Van Persie. Obviously, I don't I don't know if Rooney starts, but. I think Van Persie's going to get on the goal sheet. I think so is Suarez. They're both the two most informed strikers. Apart from Baha, maybe, but it's on off it a bit. But Van Persie and Suarez, two top goal scorers in one game. Mm-hmm. So that's my prediction. Put it out there. 2 1 United. Okay. 2 2. 2 2. Yep, 2 2. One for a draw. Um, again, I think, as I said before, I've said a couple of times, Farm's gone out the window. Um, and for me, you know, it's it's a close one to call. For me, too close to call. Because um, I think, you know, our confidence will be up there now. We've got more confidence to be than we've had, for me, at, at any point this season. Um, United, you know, the the seven points clear. City, they'll want to keep the run away. I think both teams will go for it. Um, but I just can't separate them at present. 2-2. Two, two. Right. So, uh, so that's just to uh, wrap up the show. Uh, this is um, the part one, obviously we're uh, going to do a, a build-up programme, which is uh, what you've just watched there, and then after the game, hopefully once we've got over whatever the result is, mm-hmm. we're just going to talk about you know what, what's happened, take a look at our predictions as well, see how close we were, see mm-hmm. if our you know, ones to watch, and in the worst case, if there's any incidents that have happened, we'll, uh, we'll discuss them as well, but I'm sure... Hopefully uh, they're football that. related and not... Uh not off the pitch matters which uh, dominate the newspapers tomorrow exactly. hopefully with the football that speaks exactly so uh, thank you for watching and uh, you know for both if there are any United fans watching this as well uh, good luck at the game and I hope you watch the uh, second part with us uh, if you've got any comments any predictions at all just pop them in the comment section or send uh, either me or Martin a tweet uh, during the game and we'll uh, see if we can mention them uh, at the second part thank you for watching <laughs>